Last weekend saw the culmination of the World Rugby Under-20 trophy and a chance for finalists Fiji and Samoa to gain promotion to next year's World Rugby Under-20 Championship and the tournament is part of a wider strategy to help the progression of Tier 2 sides. These are under-20 players, future international stars of the game. Um, and for many of the teams who are here, they're in our high-performance Tier 2 group. So this under-20 age group is an incredibly important stepping stone for the players to move to international level. You know, in the whole under-20 championship program since 2008, when we introduced the current format of World Championship at under-20s and trophy at under-20s every year, We've had over a thousand players come through both those tournaments to play at international test level. Um, and for the Tier 2 group in particular, where they don't have either semi-professional or professional club competitions in their country, coming to an event like this, you know, playing in a tournament format is hugely important for their development. Oh, it's awesome in terms of uh, just living in a hotel, like, experience that sort of lifestyle, then having trainings uh, every day, um, the meals we've got to eat. It's totally different to our normal, like playing for the club or anything back at home. So, especially for our local boys, they haven't experienced this sort of life. And, um, no, nah, it's good. That tournament environment is adding crucial experience to players some of whom are already benefiting from high-performance environments that have been developed over recent years in their nations. Quite a few of the boys that we have in our squad now are, are part of the academy. For the last year, a lot of work has been put in place to try and upskill them, and, uh, get their strengths up and, and get them acclimatised to, to the, the type of uh, requirements it's needed to play top-level rugby. Yeah, I mean, uh, rugby can be a career now for individuals such as a few of the boys inside the group. And uh, most of the boys are looking to get, you know, professional contracts, scholarships, maybe to top universities around the world. And uh, being here inside this group, entering into this uh, competition, that's uh, really going to open the doors for a lot of us. And uh, yeah, the boys are really keen on uh, taking that opportunity. have our Pacific Nations Cup and the Pacific Rugby Challenge for those players who are more than likely going to be participating in the Rugby World Cup. Uh, Pacific Island Combine as well, which we launched this year in the Pacific Islands and a number of players from that have gone on to get secure contracts in Australian NRC teams and some super rugby teams. So that's really positive and some of those players now will have that opportunity in the next edition of that next year in March. It'd be awesome like um, just knowing that we're able to yeah, go to that combine and get that, uh, be able to get a contract, to, that'd be a dream come true. Before players from either nation could start thinking about their future pathway, all thoughts were on the final and the chance to progress to next year's elite age group tournament. I know it's going to be a lot of free, free flow rugby. Defence will be a key part, uh, but then Fitness will also be the deciding factor for us, so if we're able to maintain our, our position and our pace for 80 minutes, then uh, it should be a good battle. Oh, I'm expecting a lot of razzle-dazzle. Uh, physical, physical game from their forwards and also their backs. See big, some big backs there, so we'll try, and, we'll try and get that win and we'll know that it won't be, won't be too easy. We really want to get back to the top, and uh, I guess winning this and uh, getting back to the top is going to be really good for development. We need to take this seriously, and we know they're going to bring everything to the final, and they want to get back into the championship, just as the same as us. So game day, we will we'll be switched on.